and now we will calculate the value of epsilon s that is the stress in steel to check our assumption that we had taken in the second step whether or not the strain in steel is greater than equal to uh, the yield strain of steel so first let's draw the strain diagram for that this should be a straight line and as I mentioned earlier epsilon cu according to ACI code is equal to 0 0.003 and this is epsilon s we know the value of c that is the depth of neutral axis and is equal to 5.89 inches and this distance from top to the level where steel bars are placed this is equal to D which is the effective depth so if we use the property of similar triangles uh, for these two triangles comparing the perpendicular upon base of these two triangles we can calculate ES from here so perpendicular 0 0.003 upon base which is equal to 5.89 for this triangle is equal to perpendicular upon base of this triangle perpendicular is ES and base this distance from here to here is D minus C D minus C and if I plug in the values of D minus C here, this equation becomes D is equal to 21.5 and C is equal to 5.89. And if I calculate ES from here, it's equal to 7.950. 0. Raised to the power minus 3. And Okay, let me make some space here first. The yield strain of steel can be calculated using the host law, which gives you a relation between stress and strain of steel. So, strain in steel is equal to stress in steel divided by modulus of elasticity represented by capital E. And Fy is equal to 629000. This is in KSI as well as this one. And EY from here is equal to 0689 raised to the power minus 3. And since we can see here that strain in steel is greater than the yield strain of steel, uh, it means that the assumption that we had taken in the second step to calculate the value of A that is the depth of compressive stress block is correct. Now let's move on to the next step. Step number five, determining the value of Mn, that is the nominal strength of beam. Let me first draw this diagram here, which is showing the forces. And this is the depth of stress block A. And this C force is located at a distance of A by two from the top. And Mn, which is the nominal moment strength, is produced by the couple of these two forces, C and T. And the distance between, uh, perpendicular distance between the two forces is equal to D minus A by 2. So if you look at this figure, if I subtract A by 2 uh, distance from this total distance D, I would get this distance D minus A by 2. And Mn in this case, would be the magnitude of C or T multiplied by the distance perpendicular arm or perpendicular distance between these two forces. So Mn is equal to if I take T here and the perpendicular distance is T minus A by 2 and T we know that is equal to A is into Fy d minus a by 2 
And if you plug in the values and calculate Mn from here, A is equal to 2.98 multiplied by F5 which is 60 and D uh, is equal to 21.5 minus A. A from previous calculation is equal to 5.008 divided by 2. 3396.48 kip inches and if I want this mn in kip fit just divide it by 12 283.04 kip fit and step number six is the calculation of phi which is the strength reduction factor we need to multiply this factor with the nominal strength that is mn and this would give us the design moment strength or the total resistance uh, provided by the cross section. So phi can be uh, evaluated using this expression here. Phi is equal to 0.65 plus net tensile strength minus 0 0.002 multiplied by 250 over 3. And ET is the net tensile strength which is the strength uh, in the extreme tension steel at nominal strength and this phi the strength reduction factor uh, should be less than or equal to 0.9 and since there exists only one layer of steel in the tension zone then in this case ES is equal to epsilon T so phi from here if we substitute this ES value into this equation is equal to Phi is equal to 1.145 and it means that phi should be equal to 0.9 for this quotient. And the last step is to calculate the design moment of strength or the resistance provided by the cross section. We just have to multiply Mn with phi. That's it. Phi Mn is equal to 283.04 multiplied by 0.9. And phi mn from here is equal to 254.736 kip fit. And now we need to compare this phi mn with mu, that is the bending load effect acting at the mid span. And mu is equal to 222 kip fit. mu is equal to 222 kip fit. And if you compare them, mu is less than phi mn. It means that our section which is located at the mid span of the beam has adequate strength or satisfactory strength in flexor. It is safe in flexor. And we are done with this analysis problem. Thanks for watching till the end and take care.